Right, so we're going to have a look at this tool here. This is a USB programming tool, and you can use it for programming receivers like this. Let's have a closer look at it. Okay, so in this programming tool, is uh, it's got a USB connector there, obviously. You just plug it straight into the computer. Now, a couple of things to note. Uh, this switch here, you can switch it this way, okay, towards the connector, or you can switch it away, and it needs to be in this position, in the away position. Uh, just note the, the way you plug the plug in here. You can only plug it in one way, but that's the way it goes in. And on the other end, we've got this JST-SH connector here, and that's what connects up to your receivers. Now, the types of receivers you can program with this are these sorts of receivers. Uh, it's a type of receiver that's actually got a, a brushless motor on it, uh, because that's, of course, channel one. And then we've got two, three, and four for a rudder ailerone elevator. And this channel here is uh, is typically the aux channel, and that's what we use uh, for plugging this connector in, and that's what we use for programming it. On this receiver here, okay, on this receiver here, it will actually be this one here, closer to the edge of the board, okay? It doesn't work if you plug it into this one here. That's the port there that you need to use. Now on the receivers, you don't need to power the receivers up, so you can just leave them unplugged. And let's have, a, let's have a bit of a look at how we're going to use this. Okay, first thing we'll do is we'll set up the software. This thing requires special software to use. So we'll have a look at the screen and see how we set that up. All right, you can just go to the Microlinks website. And if you come down here to the receivers section on the left, and just scroll all the way to the bottom of the receiver section, you'll see this receiver programming tool. Okay, so on this product page, if we go down a little bit, you can see the link here. This is a link to my Google Drive, and you can just go there. Okay, here's the, the setup file you'll need. Uh, so this one here, of course, is Google Drive. You can't click on here. You have to come up to the top right and click on the download link. And it tells you it's too big to scan it, so we'll just download anyway. Okay, I'm just going to put this zip file on my desktop. Okay, it's downloading there. It shouldn't take too long to download. Okay, once that's downloaded, we've got a zip file here. Okay, so it'll be this one here. I've actually downloaded it twice, you can see. Okay, I'll open up that zip file. And I'll just drag the exe file out. So this is not the, the program file. This is the setup file. So we'll just run the setup file. Okay, now of course uh, this, this program contains uh, chip programming code, so it's going to flag in, in Microsoft Windows, and this says unknown publisher, run anyway. Okay, so you've got to do that step to actually install it. Choose our language, accept the agreement. Okay, I'll put a shortcut on the desktop, and install it. It shouldn't take too long to install. Okay, it's also going to install the, the uh, USB connection drivers. Okay, so here's our, here's our link here. So that's the link to the program. So when we start it up, we'll have a look at the interface. Okay, let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, the next thing, uh, first thing you want to do is have a look at your COM ports. You'll probably have some COM ports listed up here, and it will be a little bit different to mine. And we'll just have a look at what happens when we plug the device in. Okay, so I'm just going to plug the device in here. And you'll hear a, a Windows tone, so it connects and uh, recognizes the device. Okay, then if we come back here, we'll see we've got an extra COM port that's shown up, COM11 in my case, and that's the, the actual programmer device. Right. Okay, so let's have a look at programming one of the ESCs. Okay, before we do, let's have a look Okay, here on my website, I'll list a whole list of uh, receivers that are actually programmable with this. This one here is the 42EF1. Okay, so let's just go and have a look at this receiver. And if we scroll down, we'll see uh, channel map. 
Okay, so of course you've got one is the is the throttle, and so you've got two channel one, two, and four, and this one here is channel five. This is the auxiliary channel. So that that port there is where we're going to connect it. Okay, let's go back to the top. Right here. So we're just going to connect straight into there. Like that. Okay, now we don't need it connected to power. We don't need any power to the receiver. Okay, so back in the software, we're choosing our COM port on the top left here. In my case, it's COM 11. And we choose connect. Okay, so once we've connected, we'll see it come up with these uh, these settings here. We don't change these at all. These are these are MBUS settings. If we go down to the the ports, this is where we have an option to change some settings. So you can see in each of the ports, we got alien elevator and rudder, and we've got the, we've got PWM set up here. We can reverse the direction if we want to. Not much point for throttle, but if, for example, um, if you want rudder. You can reverse the direction of the rudder and hit save if you need to. Uh, another thing you can do is uh, port two is the aileron. You can set port three to be aileron as well. And then you can come over here and reverse one. Okay, if you want to do dual ailerons or something like that. Um, another interesting thing is that uh, if you've got your radio set up properly, you can actually map one of these channels to an auxiliary. So if you're, if you're set up for aux one, and you want to do some sort of special functions on the receiver, you can do that too. So once you've done that, you just hit save. Okay, and it'll give you a message saying the parameters are saved. That's just an easy way that you can program the receiver. Now at the moment, you can't actually program any of the ESC functions on the receiver. You can just change the ports and the direction and things like that. Once we're done, we just we simply unplug it. And just make sure you disconnect first in the software and then un unplug it and your settings are saved okay there we go